first two slides are complete marketing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip past that. <laughs> um, so I think you know decentralized computing is very very important because you know in the past you had to get all your compute from sort of the big clouds, and they continue to accumulate power, uh, which which really sucks because like who wants to be Amazon's slave when they make like 60% gross margin on like CPUs, right? Um, and if you go look at GPU rentals from there, it's like horrendous. So now there's a ton, a ton of GPU clouds out there. There's over 60, uh, but the problem is many of them are like dog shit. Uh, sorry, sorry, we're in the house of God. Um, they're very bad. Like they have bad security. They like their they, their nodes fail all the time. Their optics fail all the time. It's it's just they're not they're not good, right? Um, and so you need to have something that can take this like very decentralized marketplace of like anyone can throw up a GPU cluster. Uh, GPU clusters are now being invested in like their real estate, right? Like literally real estate investors, commercial real estate investors are doing notes for GPU clusters at like 10, 12% interest rates, which is just like, it's like standard commercial real estate now. Um, and the big problem with that is that um, most of these people don't know how to run clusters, right? They, they don't know how to set up Slurm, they don't know how to set up you know, Kubernetes, anything. Uh, they don't know how to make sure their clusters aren't failing, that they're not overheating. And so you need a way to resiliently run real workloads over other people's compute, and you also need a marketplace for that, right? So that's why I really like Prime Intellect, right? I uh, got to do some marketing for them, um, is that they can actually take compute from literally anywhere in the world and tie it together, right? And then, you know, sure, you can do that with inference. That's one thing. Uh, but, but really the holy grail is to be able to do training as well, right? Um, and so that's, that's the real big sort of kicker here is can you, can you tie together this like sea of compute from people who are making 12% returns, not like Amazon making 60% returns, and can you do it reliably um, and, and can you do it on any workload, right? Um, so, so generally, you know, historically you used to do, uh, training used to be asynchronous, right? Uh, you could synchronize the weights with a parameter server. S CPUs would do work. They'd synchronize with a parameter server. But you know, with, with, with LLMs especially, but even before that, we moved to, uh, to, to synchronized training where you have to have all the GPUs communicate every update. Um, and that, that lockstep synchronization uh, means that you can't like, fall too far forward or behind. Um, and so even like and H100, right? So on the right is sort of a chart about H100s. I think this is a paper from Baidu. But even within a cluster of like 16K GPUs, GPUs will be slower by up to 10%, right? So there, there's a lot of variation even in the manufacturing. This could be because of cooling. This could be because of optics being poor. This could be for a number of different reasons. Um, and then the other challenge is Amdahl's law, right? You have more compute resources, the speed up is not perfect. It's not, you don't get strong scaling or weak scaling, right? You don't get good speed up, you, you get starts to asymptote out, right? Um, and so, you know, what's really important is like an optimizer that, that can allow scaling uh, really efficiently. Um, and the other aspect, right, going back to is fault, fault tolerant training, right? So, so today, right, if you're running a training run on a few hundred GPUs, a thousand GPUs, if one of them fails, if one fiber optic fails, if one switch fails, you now kill the entire training run. Reload from the last checkpoint, uh, which who knows how long ago that was saved. Maybe it was saved 10 minutes ago, maybe it was saved an hour ago. Um, and then you have to restart the training from that point, um, which, is, which is fine, but then you end up losing all that work. Um, historically, you know, there were things like MapReduce from Google where you, know, you would just swap that workload over, much, much more resilient. Um, and so, you know, and, and then the other thing is like GPUs are really unreliable, even, even at the good clouds they die a lot, right? So it's, it's, it's all about that infort mortality. Um, and migration of workloads is really, really important um, because otherwise, again, like, like I said, if you have a failure, you're losing out an hour of your training run. Uh, and it's not just like one GPU, it could be, you know, it could be thousands and thousands of GPUs, one failure. Um, so, so really, really important is RAS, right? Cluster level RAS, reliability, availability, serviceability. Um, and, and so, like, you know, Microsoft has a good paper, although their, their cluster manager is actually not that good, but they have a good paper about it. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's that when you have a failure, you have to be able to recover quickly, right? And, and especially as you, like, scale the size of the compute you're running, right? If you have, you have, have 10,000, you know, your, your GPUs um, are constantly failing. I think Meta in their Llama, Llama paper showed that their GPUs were failing, like, once every few hours, 
right? And that was, that was a measly 16,000 GPUs, right? Um, you know, and when you look at like the next generation llamas, the next generation uh, GPTs, et cetera, they're training on 100,000 GPUs or more, right? Uh, like XAIs run, et cetera, right? This means that, you know, that every few hours turns into every few minutes as you continue to scale because GPUs don't get any more reliable. So fault tolerant training is also really, really important uh, when, you're, when you're thinking about how to do decentralized training because now it's not just a cluster you're running, but it's also a cluster that you're just operating on that's in the, in the pool from any random person, right? So you have to be able to make sure that that, that cluster has also got good RAS. Um, and there's all sorts of failures related to sort of silent data corruption and, and all sorts of other things. I'll skip past sort of what that, uh, that, that right? But what, what, what's important is sort of, um, Right now, all training is synchronous, right? And we, the holy grail is to make it either asynchronous um, or, you know, and, and make the updates between every step, every gradient update, not have to mean every compute element has to communicate with each other, right? Or if every compute element needs to communicate with each other, then that communication is very low volume. Because today, you have to pass the entire model weight um, plus the optimizer state, which ends up being like 4x the size of the model, right? So if you're training like a 70 billion parameter model, you need to pass 4x that number every single training step. Um, and when you're passing that, you can't really overlap communications and compute. Um, so so th that's, that's a really big uh, penalty. You know, you end up passing, you know, 500 gigs of data or 250 gigs of data um, every, every single iteration. So if it takes 10 seconds and then each GP only has, you know, 50 gigabytes a second, it's gonna take another five seconds or 10 seconds to, yeah, it's gonna take another four seconds, eight seconds, there we go, eight seconds to communicate. So there's like a lot of overheads associated with synchronous training. Um, so ways to like really reduce the amount of data that you're sending every gradient update, like what Prime Intellect has is, is very important. Um, and, and, and so when you think about, hey, what is, what is multi data center, multi campus, what does decentralized training look like? It's taking compute from a number of different um, regions um, and and tying it together, right? You have low late. You need and, and you need to do this with low latency, right? You can, and you need to do this where any region, any random GPU can fail, and no one else fails, right? Because power could go out or the GPU could fail. Wh whatever happens. So so there's a there, there's 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 a lot of um, and, and doing multi-continent as well, right? Because you don't know where the idle GPUs are across the world. Otherwise, it's all centralized again, right? Um, and and I think centralization is bad generally. Um, and so uh, there, there's, there's a lot of hierarchy related to this, a lot of research out there like branch terrain merge, what Prime Intellect has published, some of the follow-on work that Google's done based on what Prime Intellect did um, and, and is doing. Um, there's all sorts of hierarchical sync strategies. I, I won't talk too much about that because it's just, uh, I, think, I think they're running behind, so I'll be a little quicker, right? Um, you know, but, but I think the important thing to note is like you want to be able to roll up across many regions and many uh, compute elements. Um, and then I guess the last thing I would mention is like today everyone sort of has, uh, you know, networking uh, fully connected GPU nodes, right? You, you buy a GPU node, that GPU node has eight GPUs, it also has eight networking cards, and then it also, all those networking cards connect up to switches, it's called a class network where everything is connected up in a tree, right? Full, fully connected. That is really, really expensive. Right. Um, so this is this is just like a breakdown of like a 65,000 a 65,000 GPU cluster, which is, you know, about on the scale of the training runs last year slash currently, but it's it's quickly being passed. Um, you know, the total cost of that networking for that cluster is is close to 500 million dollars. Right. Um, it's it's 55,000 dollars per server. This is an incredible amount of cost for keeping all of the clusters or all the GPUs fully connected. Um, and and as you, if you think about the percentage of compute, right, uh, if you have a 2K cluster of GPUs and fully connected, it's only like 12% of their cost, right, to be fully connected, 400 gigs of infinite band per GPU uh, to, to, to any other GPU. If you're talking about a 65,000 GPU, this, this jumps up to 18%, right? This is an additional roughly $20,000 per GPU that you're spending. Uh, or twenty thousand dollars per server that you're spending, um, but if you're able to really dramatically reduce the um, the data you're transferring either through some asynchronous compute method or through a training strategy or through some way some some optimizer that doesn't need to pass everything every gradient update, then you can drop that compute cost massively and only spend on the front end network. In which case, you could save as much as you know fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars per GPU. And this is effectively the same thing as doing decentralized training. Right? If you're able to do this, you know, able to remove the back end network 
uh, to at least to some degree or scale it down, it's the same thing as also doing training across different regions because you're, you're, you're doing the same, you're attacking the same problem, right? You're trying to tr train models through a small straw instead of an extremely wide uh, amount of uh, compute. So yeah, I think, I think there's huge amounts of cost savings, there's huge amounts of stranded GPUs that are just not doing effective real work, right? Like the, the cost difference between different clouds can be as much as 3x, right? Because a lot of these clouds are bad at marketing, uh, bad at sales, stranded compute, they're, they're, maybe their nodes are just not as reliable, right? So it's really important to be able to drive down that network sp uh, spend um, and also unlock all these GPUs that are decentralized today but not being used effectively if we want to have, you know, I guess uh, the, the, the pitch line is decentralized AGI. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you.